The image on the chronogram cover has a very nubbly, very painted surface where the paint really got to sort of stand up and be itself because it's one of the things that oil paint does so magnificently and it's why I've been unwilling to give up that hand-painted surface so far. People have said, why don't you just spray them? It'll be so easy. Well, yes, it would be, but they, they would become a very, very different thing. These pieces really want to be certain color combinations, but they don't always tell me right away what those are. And so sometimes I have to paint and repaint and repaint until I figure out what it is that they're trying to be. I've been working with hexagons for quite a long time. Um, I find that triangular grids are really fascinating because they're not at all like rectangular or square grids. Um, the odd numbered nature of the, of the triangle, the isometric grid, is sort of perpetually uneasy in a way. It doesn't resolve the way a nice bilaterally symmetrical shape does. And so triangles and hexagons have this kind of, they insist upon a sort of movement, um, which is alien to us because it's, it's an odd numbered symmetry that doesn't fit with ours reliefs are very interesting to me. Things can be both image and volume at the same time. The process is pretty much identical to the way it's always been since I started working this way, which is that I would start with graph paper and, a, and an automatic pencil and uh, would work out what it is that I wanted to make and then I would grid it up and cut it out and then route it with a roundover bit to give it a nice rounded profile and then sand it a lot and prime it and sand it and prime it and sand it until it was all smooth and nice and then begin painting. The process is exactly the same now, except that I draw it on the computer, send the file off to the shop, they mill the work, and then I do the sanding and priming. It saves me a huge amount of time and the levels of precision are just astonishing. And, and um, it's really gratifying to be able to sit and work on something on the computer, solve problems, make the thing work visually the way I want it to. And then a week later, end up with a big box of parts that are exactly what I drew. Absolutely exactly. Abstraction is open-ended. Uh, by definition, it is not specific or literal or representational of anything. And because I am interested in so many different visual traditions and so many influences, I try to make sure that even though those all inform the work, that the work doesn't look too much like any of them because I find that specificity is good in terms of the clean and hard-edged execution that I'm interested in but illusions can be troubling to me because then people think they know what they're looking at and they walk away from it. I'm interested in making things that are evocative without being specific to anything and so that everyone brings their own information to it and attempts to puzzle out what they are. The titles are meant to be specific but not tell you what you're looking at. And so there's a nice back and forth, a dialogue between these pieces which I hope are richly evocative of all kinds of different things and yet they refuse to tell you what they are or what they're about or what they mean because I think all those things are, are really quite silly. Um, at the end of the day, it's a nonverbal experience that you're having, and so when I clutter it up with words, it uh, just gets in the way of your experience of the piece.